ఓం శ్రీ సాయిరాం ధర్మవాహిని చాప్టర్ టెన్ ద హౌస్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ నెక్స్ట్ అబౌట్ ద హౌస్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ద రెసిడెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద కాంక్రిటైజ్డ్ ఫార్మ్ఫుల్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ డివినిటీ ద టెంపుల్ ఆలయ ఆర్ మందిర్ అండ్ ద రూల్స్ ఆఫ్ ధర్మ రిలేటింగ్ టు ఇట్ rules have overgrown and overwhelmed these institutions following the whims and prejudices of various authorities they have led people away from dharma and brahman and even away from proper action they have confounded the devotees by their variety and unreasonableness the rules are insisted upon blindly so they have done much harm to the welfare of the world itself in fact the rules and formalities form the first steps in the retreat away from god and have fostered atheism in great measure functions of the temple think deeply over the functions of the temple temples are centers of discipline where the aspirant is guided step by step to attain a vision of the truth there are schools for the training of the spirit academics for the promotion of scriptural studies institutes of super sciences laboratories for the testing of the values of life there are hospitals for the treatment and cure not only of the birth death disease which has persisted in the individual for ages but even the much more potent much more patent mental disorders that trouble those who don't know the secret of acquiring peace temples are gymnasia where people are reconditioned on their hesitant faith vaning conviction and upsurging egotism are all cured temples are mirrors that reflect atheistic standards and achievements the purpose of the temple is to awaken the divinity in humanity madhavatva and manavatva inducing people to believe that the physical frames in which they live or themselves houses of god therefore all the formalities rites and rituals of the temple emphasize and cultivate the spiritual truth brahma jnana that the individual jeev is just a mighty ocean of god devotion is the queen the scriptures teach that all actions and activities must lead ultimately to non attachment for this is the best qualification for the development of knowledge of brahman of three devotion wisdom and renunciation bhakti jnana and vairagya devotion is the queen the rules and rites are the maids in waiting the queen treats her maids with kind consideration and favor no doubt but if the ceremonies which are only servants and aids disregard the queen they should be mercilessly dismissed all the formalities and rituals in the temples must therefore subserve the glorification of the queen the devotion this is the sum and substance of the dharma that must direct and govern all temples only then can man reach the goal devotion helps the attainment of the bliss of merger with the basic brahman most easily by canalizing towards the lord the mental hesitations the sensory reaching out and the emotional urges of people it is in this direction that all the details of the worship of the lord in temples took shape in the temple all the various ceremonies from the awakening of god in the early dawn to the laying in bed late at night are intended to heighten and promote the devotional trends of the mind in turn 
each incident helps the sublimation of the appropriate emotion in a peculiarly charming manner in the sublimity of that experience the agitation of the lower emotions declines and disappears the vulgar feelings of ordinary life become elevated to the status of worship and dedication to the almighty presence the lord will evoke in each the emotion that the person associates with him if he is conceived as the monster bhuta he will terrify as a monster if pictured and believed as the master of the five elements bhutanta he will manifest himself likewise perhaps you might ask how why perhaps the fundamental foolishness of the age is this very attitude of doubt it has now become a fashion to distribute advice a fashion indulged in by those who know and those who don't they don't care whether the advice is followed or not people jump into this superior attitude of giving advice just to feel important and show off their status they are blinded by their own conceit and they have to be pitied more than condemned for no one can lay down thus and thus only as far as the lord is concerned moreover to wisdom jnana and detachment vairagya might have some standards of measure devotion has its own measure it will assume many a form adjusted to the attitude of the devotee kamsa jarasandha shishupala hiranyakashyapa etc took up an attitude of hostility to the lord so the lord manifested himself as their enemy and finished their careers and struggles if the lord is conceived as the master loved one as jayadeva gauranga tukaram ramdas surdas radha meera and sakhubai conceived him he manifest himself as the nearest and the dearest and shores plus the little child takes the sun to be similar to the vermilion kumkum dot on its mother's forehead but the knowing adult sees it as a spear of effulgent heat this shows the effect of the mental picture on the process of comprehension comprehension in case of godhead as well as the temple the same law applies it is proper for people to have an exalted attitude toward the lord as well as toward the habitation of the lord namely the temple this attitude yields great good while it is quite natural and appropriate for people to picture god madhava in a human form it is not desirable to assume that he is just an ordinary individual the principle of devotion states that he is conceived as an extraordinary person with a figure of sublime splendor arousing feelings during worship feelings aroused by and during worship must be sweet and melodious and must im perceptibly transform the low desires and carvings of matter born people they must not awaken or inflame the latent animal instinct of people take this take this example tyagaraja forgot that he should go to bed in his enthusiasm to see that rama was put to bed here he should infer not that tyagaraja made rama sleep in a swing but that rama seated tyagaraja on the swing of devotion and gently swung him into sleep or the forgetfulness of all things material in its of remembering your child in its cradle when you swing your chosen lord ist devata in the silver or golden cradle you must cultivate the attitude of seeing your chosen deity rama or krishna in the cradle when you swing your own child in it so to when you stand before the installed god you must get confirmed 
in the installation of brahman in your own heart as the real base of your existence knowledge and bliss it is to instill this feeling that the rites and ceremonies of temple worship have been organized so don't take the divine couples sita rama radha krishna lakshmi narayana and parvati parameshwara in the temple as pitiable couples aching out a miserable existence in the cramped sanctuary subsisting on food given by the worshipper and slacking thirst with the drinks that the worshipper offers the worshipper say the lord is sleeping the lord is taking food while refusing to open the door of the inner shrine this is absurd they sometimes even enforce silence for the lord is asleep and he might be awakened too soon by the noise there will be no chance at such times even for emergent pleadings statements such as these may cause wrong conclusions in the minds of people they raise many ridiculous queries like the problems of the lord answering calls of nature while shut up in the niche and they promote atheism among people the worshipers and the carping unbelievers are both ignorant of the real principles of temple worship that is the reason for their conduct you should be cultured enough to avoid the lower worldly path the temple should not be valued on secular principles at all only the attitude of devotion can ennoble and beautify feelings that drag you down to the lower worldly path temple rules should not conflict with the highest conceptions of devotion today on account of new fangled views temples have become objects of derision this is sad state of affairs therefore it is necessary to reveal publicly the real objective of temple worship and elevate temples to the status that is their due the temple must prosper once again how stupid it is to be under the impression that the lord sleeps as you do when a lullaby is sung or that he wakes up as you do when someone calls him allowed or that he feasts when some food is placed before him as you want to do or that he becomes weaker and weaker when not given regular meals has happens to you filling up the entire universe down to the minutest part of the atom unreachable by time effulgent behind imagination merciful above all expectation the lord has to be conceived as the vital energy that pervades and inheres everywhere forever how foolish to subject the lord of that stature to the carping criticism of cynics and the false theories of the ignorant can you bind the lord to a timeable as you can a devotee travels don't fall upon the devotee at a fixed time do they does the devotee have to wait till the lord is awakened from a sleep oh the foolishness of it all the infant can cry for its mother's milk at any time the mother will rise from sleep and feed it at her breast she won't push it off angry that it else when she is sleeping well the lord who is the universal mother must be getting disturbed and awakened at least a million times if he really slept it all depends on the progress of your mental faculties they must reach the supreme level the lord is immanent everywhere he is capable of everything he is the universal witness there is nothing he does not know these truths must be taken as axiomatic and all rituals and disciplines sadhanas must be arranged and interpreted in conformity with those truths no low demeaning feeling must be associated with the worship of the lord or with his name and form therefore the highest devotion and rites that can supplement it or very essential to say that the lord's sleep will be disturbed 
that one should not inter- interrupt him while eating and that at such time the doors of the temple must remain closed is to say the least infantile he does not indicate a broad or correct attitude when the emotion of devotion gets ripe and blossoms more fully these low secular feelings melt away into nothingness one small incident comes to mind now once in calcutta in the kali temple constructed by rani rasamani a gopala idol fell down and its foot was broken a little since many elders declare that according to the scriptures a broken image should not be worshiped rani rasamani made arrangements to get a new one made by sculptures ramakrishna heard of this and re reproached her saying maharani if your son in law breaks his leg what will you do what is the correct thing to do bandage the foot or set it right or discard the son in law and get another in his place the elders and pandits were dumbfounded the broken foot of gopala was set right and the image was installed and worshiped as before see when devotion is purified and is ascendant the lord will be patent this too is the dharma declared in the scripture shastras when the doors are closed the rules might say that they should not be opened but that is only a general direction for when persons like shankara sananda jayadeva chaitanya and gauranga come it becomes impossible to follow the rule isn't it lord krishna turned around at udipi to give darshan to his devotee shiva yielded before the intensity of nandanar's devotion the reason for closing the doors is not connected with the lord such rules have been prescribed by elders for reasons unconnected with divinity the rules must not conflict with the highest conceptions of the devotee if the temple servants have no fixed timings and if everything is left to their whim and fancy the temple will not be able to install devotion in the mind of the ordinary man certain limitations and regulations are needed even to arouse the awe and respect that are the roots of devotion that is why certain hours are laid down for entry into temples and for opening the shrine for worship such restrictions are not repugnant to the main temple main principle for the aim of the temple is to promote dharma to develop the inner culture and spiritual discipline human behavior actions attitude all have to be subservient to the overall need to grow in the consciousness of god as the living presence so certain rules are necessary no doubt for the correct performance of the temple rites otherwise ordinary men will not learn steady fastness faith and discipline and they will not grow in devotion the responsibility of the worshipper archaka of those in charge of temples and the worshiping public is great indeed everyone must be aware of the purpose of temples and the need to carry out temple rites they promote faith and devotion shraddha and bhakti more than anything else therefore the doors of the temple can be opened for allowing worship by ardent seekers no one should forget or ignore this basic fact temples exist for the progress and welfare of humanity jai sai ram